Hey everyone and welcome to part I have lost count in the manual conversion series. I am so excited as this build is realistically only a few more videos left before completion. So today we will be dealing with the wiring harness and hopefully we'll get this thing to fire up. Once we've confirmed that both the motor and all the manual bits are operating correctly, all that's left is really to just reassemble the car and give it its first little test drive. But I'm just going to feed this down the bottom of the engine back there and then just ta using tape I'm just going to tape up all the cables and then pull it back up this end so it ends up at the top. Obviously I need to route all this loom anyway and start to kind of figure out where it goes in the motor but as long as I've got all the cables at the surface side I can kind of start planning. So that's what I'm going to do for now and then while I'm under the car which I'll use the GoPro for I'll also just go around if there's anything else I've missed out. So I've done most of the stuff I think I need to do for the bottom for now. Then yeah we'll be topside for some amount of time. Yeah. Alright so here we are at the bottom of the car and this is the wire that I just tossed down. So. <laughs> I will tie up, actually I think this one stays at the bottom so I'll leave the exhaust one, but these two cables here, so one and two, and then there's also the alternator further up, which I have to find, it will also need to be tied up. Using the same method as the wiring for the NSX boot in the last video, I'll be dropping the cable down from the top of the engine bay, tying the plugs up, and then pulling the cable back up to the top. Okay, that video was useless. I don't know who this Stephosaurus Rect is, but she's fucking useless. Ooh, thermostat housing. I probably should have installed that before I put the motor back on. So, you'll see I'll, I'll add a clip around here at some point of the thermostat housing incident, but I cracked one of the bolts. So this is the, the one that I broke, um, and then this is the intact one. So I gotta figure out, actually, figure that out. Where it's supposed to be on the gearbox. I probably should have put it on. I did look into replacing or repairing the snapped off tab, but the cost for either wasn't really that great. And given it still fits pretty securely into the car, the damaged part's just gonna be reinstalled. All right, just had a little break, kind of figuring out where everything goes. And where I last left you guys, I didn't take any photos, apparently, of any of the loom being disconnected. So I'm just gonna start assembling. Um, so I'm gonna start reassembling the like throttle and take all that fun stuff here. I don't want to do the supercharger and stuff yet, but I'll start just getting all the parts together and kind of working out where everything is, starting, is, is supposed to go, kind of figuring out from there where the plugs are supposed to go. Um, and yeah, we'll just move on from there. Good morning, it is a beautiful afternoon actually, not morning, working on the MR2. Now, I'm going to start with a bit of sad news, or bad news perhaps. Um, we had a good chunk, at least a solid day's worth of work that I filmed, and you, this amazing device, this little GoPro right here, you, buddy, corrupted the files. So I've got no footage. <laughs> to show what we did. So you're just gonna have to deal with me walking around the car with my camera that also keeps dying and just letting you guys know what, what we've done with the MR2. I mean, obviously it looks a lot more complete than when you would have last seen it um, and what the plan today is and where, where we've kind of gotten up, you know, get yourself up to speed to where we are now and yeah, what the plan for today is. So let's get onto it. <laughs> Firstly, not even starting with the engine bay, we're starting on the floor. We've got a new set of handbrake cables so these ones came from MR2 Heaven. He was incredibly, incredibly um, kind and understanding and actually offered to send us a set of, so these are SW20 handbrake cables. Um, you'll see on their website now, I'll leave it in the description, I'll leave it up here, that they no longer advertise their ADUB handbrakes to fit Mark 1Bs. Um, prior, it just said it would fit all models. Now it's just for the Mark 1As. There is a very slight difference between the 1A and the 1B video up here as to um, you know what the differences were and the issues we had with the handbrake cables but yeah so these are SW20 cables again I filmed it and it was hilarious because I spent basically all day sanding them down but um, yeah I had to file down these little hammer ends <coughs> like so uh, to actually get them to fit in this little equalizer thingamadoodle whatever you want to call it 
So these fit lengthwise. These do actually seem to look correct. They do seem to be the right length. We just haven't installed them to the car yet. And up here, we've got a bunch of cabling and, and pipes and supercharging bits and bobs all installed. So my neighbor, he actually um, took pity on me because we got to starting to reinstall all the parts and I could not remember for the life of me where everything went. So he actually came along and spent a couple hours um, just, yeah, figuring out where everything went. So far, in terms of fluid, everything has been done, um, especially <laughs> the worst job, which is doing the gearbox fluid on these. Gearbox oil on any car sucks. Um, I ended up getting John to do it and I'm really glad he did because under here, under here in our squeaky clean, doesn't look it, but the floor is squeaky clean. Um, <clears throat> he was crawling under there, dealing with the fluid, and yeah, in gearbox fashion, ended up basically swimming in it, literally. <laughs> we had to basically throw out all his clothes. It was horrible. Speaking of leaking, I, I'm not sure if the motor's okay, because, well, I mean, it's a Toyota, right? Like, Toyota's leak from factory. And as you can probably see, the floor is pretty clean. There's no there's no oil leaks. The sump is dry as a sump probably shouldn't be. So yeah, I don't know if that's something to be concerned with. Because I mean, how am I gonna know that this motor has oil in it if it's not leaking? You know, it's 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 an MR2 thing. It's supposed to leak oil and it's not. So yeah, I mean <laughs> it might it might work for like the initial startup, but yeah, it's probably <laughs> it's probably gonna be it. So we'll just like Come buddy. But before we do, John, what's going on? I'm trying to restore the battery cover. So this has got a weird kind of rubbery insulation stuff on it, which is all rusted underneath and fallen to bits. So I'm trying to remove all of that, which is way more effort than I thought it'd be, and then re-clear and paint it and tidy it up and make it less rubbish. It smells like exposed metal, which I love. Mm. Look at the, the life left on that. <laughs> that drill is being destroyed by this process. Yeah. But it's fine. It was 40 bucks. <laughs> leaves us to today um, there's probably other stuff that I've missed out on but again trying to figure out where the footage went or well, not even where the footage went when I started when I stopped and kind of filling in the gaps so yeah a bunch of stuff has been done if you have any questions um, about certain aspects done to the car let me know in the comment section you know I'm more than happy to answer I'm more than happy to make some video responses if you'd like just to kind of detail because I have noticed especially with working with this there isn't much info like there is obviously stuff on forums with these cars, but in terms of photo and video, because a lot of stuff was on like um, like photo bucket and stuff, so a lot of it you don't really get access to anymore. But let's get on to where we are now. So, intercooler is on. What we were planning on doing is basically we want to try and get the car to start. I've got some videos that I did actually manage to take on my phone, so I'll just post them here. <laughs> And yeah, so as you can see, the car turns over, or well, the motor turns over, um, but it, it just sounds weird. And it's certainly, and, and the spark plugs aren't igniting. So there's a couple of there's a couple of issues that we sort of we think we've kind of messed up on. So <clears throat> intercooler's on, and what we wanted to try and do before we figured out that it had no spark was actually to see if it started. So threw the intercooler on, we sprayed some of this glorious stuff. Start your bastard, good old stuff. We use it for the bikes all the time, and it's fantastic sprayed it in there i mean to be fair it's such a long travel <laughs> to get it in there just to see if the car would actually ignite um, or, or turn over or make it sound like it was catching fire somewhere it didn't um yeah so then we went to around here pulled out spark plug checked it was not sparking at all um none of them were so we are now dealing with a wiring issue or figuring out what's going on there um <coughs> I did a bit of looking, but to be quite frank, I don't really understand electrics at all. But down in there is the, I think it's a coil pack or something. I don't know. I'll give the proper name around there. But basically, I'm just re, like rechasing all the wiring, making sure that the distributor is properly, properly all plumbed up, which it appears to be. Um, <clears throat> got my multimeter here, but to be quite honest with you, I have no idea how to multimeter. So yeah, it's. <laughs> It's a bit of a it's a bit of a shitty situation, honestly. So where I'm currently sitting right now is I'm just waiting for a friend to arrive who is an electronic whiz. So he's gonna come along. I've told him that I'm filming, he's more than happy with it, and I'm basically just gonna film him, figure out why my car isn't sparking. <coughs> now, <coughs> you would have seen in the video, and I did just briefly mention the spark isn't the only issue we've got with the motor. When it turns over, I'll play it again here. Um, 
we had a quick look online and one of the issues is the cams might be upside down. <laughs> so, so apparently, I mean, you can be seen here, it's gonna be a little difficult now, but obviously these are the indicator lines and everything is all lined up to the, to the gears. But on the four ages, they're actually supposed to be upside down, which again, I don't understand because the indicators are at the top, but yeah, the cam indicators are supposed to be facing downward, which admittedly they're not at the moment. So yeah, we'll just have to work that one out. It's probably because the cams are upside down. So that's probably something we're gonna have to do today as well at some point. We're not gonna leave that to just me and John because we're dumb. So we've got so we've got Richard, who's our sparky, sparky, sparky boom whiz man to come along and help us with the electrics, this whole mess, everything going around here. And then we've got Sam, who has been featured in so many episodes and honestly, he's just the best person ever. And he said that he'll come by and yeah help slash probably do it because yeah I, I, I am just so nervous like i'm glad it turns over and i'm glad it doesn't sound like anything is impacting anything in any kind of way but i am just so paranoid that this motor is gonna blow up so yeah that's where we're at at the moment with the mr2 uh with where it's sitting so yeah at the moment we're just kind of killing time i'm doing a final millionth time update on where we're at with the car um and yeah, an update when Richard arrives and we can do some sparky stuff. Yeah. The next video will be a bit of a big one, starting with all the electrical gremlins Richard, our local lightning wizard, will work on, followed by Sam's sneaky little trick to flip the exhaust cam over without opening the engine, and who knows, maybe we'll get a firing four banger.